Here's your hosts, Richard Haskins and Jared Gideon. What's up, motherfuckers? I'm pretty <laughs> goddamn hungover today. Uh, Thursday night, uh, we had uh, We Beasties rehearsal. Is that yesterday? Goddamn. It was like a fucking blur. We had We Beasties rehearsal. Anytime, you know, that group of people gets together, uh, it's a given that we're going to get totally trashed. Uh, ended up going to uh, rehearse till probably, I don't know, 10.30. Uh, Brett Crow uh, plays with us, and uh, he had to be at Backyard and Bell at 11 to play for fucking Puddin' Tane. So we just went through the back, and um, I helped him carry his bass cab in, and the whole band met over there, and fucking got super tore up. And uh, then we just kept hanging. We shut the bar down, then just kept hanging out, and my God, uh, we... Uh, Oh, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what our night looked like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're playing with some new equipment here tonight. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so I, uh, next thing I know, I'm getting home at like 5.30 in the morning. I got to be at work at 7, and I am just like, fuck. You know, there's no no reason to go to sleep now, you know. And I'm doing landscaping, so it's like tough work. So <laughs> take a few shots, get ready, get ready to go to, <laughs> get ready to go to fucking... Uh, work, uh, slaved away all day, hangover kind of melted off around noon, came home, passed the fuck out, woke up, ate a hamburger, started, well, here we are again. <laughs> He's got a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry came and grabbed me, and so I guess we're going to do this shit tonight. Feel free to call in if you have any comments or questions. A lot of crazy things have gone on in Denton this week, it would seem. Call the hotline. 214-488-9605. Uh, the fucking... The preachers like went out to fucking UNT yesterday, right? The, the Yeah, yeah. All right, before you get started on that, what's funny is I wanted to go out and like interview some of these people on, on both sides of that and uh, get some footage and stuff. And I read the post that it was tomorrow at like... Uh, 4.30 in the morning because I got up super ass early that next day. So it seemed like they were talking about Friday you, it was going to happen. So I messaged Richard and was like, hey, man, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go down and uh, interview those people and shit tomorrow. And he's like, that was today, dude. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a lot of crazy things been like in the news. There's a lot of snake bites recently. I read in the didn't. Yeah. Like world record year for fucking copperhead and rattlesnake bites in North Texas. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like everybody's going down to Denton Tattoo and getting like... <laughs> oh, no. no <laughs> it's yeah, a world yeah. record. There's, there's so many of them. There was a hundred people lined outside this place trying to get <laughs> snake bites. <laughs> I like pizza and heavy metal as well. Those are... He does like those things. I like... I mean, you know, I like thin crust pizza. Sometimes... Pizza. See, Chris Shelton, he, he commented that he likes pizza and heavy metal. See, I come home sometimes and he's got like three empty pizza boxes on the coffee table... And then just freaking corn blaring at full blast. Really? Yeah, like he's just, they're just like, just just jamming corn, like the first few hours. I often wonder about that. Like back in the fucking 90s, there was a bunch of motherfuckers that were getting like goddamn corn tattoos and shit on them. And like, you know, or you remember, remember like fucking yin yangs, like how goddamn popular that was? <laughs> so it was like yin fucking yin yangs everywhere, you know? <laughs> I don't remember the 90s. It was just people. They're like, bro, I'm too old to surf now, and I still got this yin yang tattoo. Yeah, I don't really know <laughs> where that came from. There was something else, some other crazy shit happened. Oh, we yeah. got a new, we got a new uh, fucking uh, WWE champion, Kofi yeah, Kingston. Yeah, Kofi Kingston. Yeah, that was that he didn't was, he didn't, uh, he, didn't he didn't uh, turn over the title on Monday or anything. I didn't watch. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I this week has been a fucking blur. I just been kind of catching up with. Stuff recently. Uh, the, the main thing I watched for the fucking oh God, yeah, God smack tattoos. God smack tattoos. The, the sun with the little squiggly things on it. Oh God. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to have a God smack tattoo. Like on your on your uh, get a God smack tramp stamp. Would that be a God stamp? I fucking saw this girl naked one time and she had fucking like incubus lyrics like tattooed on her ribs. I was like. Uh, I met this guy, a oh, really funny story, back when I lived in Plano in like 2003 or something like that, I met this girl on dating sites when they were kind of a new thing, and she invites me over, and then she's like, I guess she's living with her boyfriend, which was really weird, so I had to like pretend that I wasn't there to meet her, weird situation, but anyway, this guy, her boyfriend was like such a doucher, he was like, I got these Dave Matthews 
tablature on my arm and it's not even like music notes it's like the core, where you put your fingers at on like oh the actual just the tabs the tabs i got i think my favorite tattoo i have i don't know if you can this one right here i have my own name on a tombstone uh i don't remember getting it um i was at a fucking trailer park oh wow yes. so you got a gg allen richard haskins tattoo yeah exactly uh, and apparently when i when i woke up like you know fucking super hungover I mean not unlike today and uh, fucking you know this guy passed out fucking got like a tattoo gun in his hand and I was like fucking wake him up I'm like what the fuck is this shit you know <laughs> it's like that's your second choice you know th that came out great I was like what the fuck was my first choice you know what are you a crack baby <laughs> apparently I wanted a dick and balls with the angel wings on it like on my shoulder <laughs> which like I think sounds fucking hilarious like I, I would have totally supported that but uh, he didn't want to like do the dick too good because he wanted you know what I mean he was like afraid he was going to be like the dick guy who like like oh if you really want a great dick tattoo I if you want if you want an A plus dick tattoo I tell you a guy to go to man this guy has been drawing dicks his whole life and then he got a, he got him a tattoo gun and it, it was and he draw a dick on you so quick <laughs> he ain't funny, partner. <sighs> God damn. <laughs> I like. I would like a larger dick tattooed on my actual dick. Oh. <laughs> so that it just optical illusion. Would it be like? Uh, I don't know. How could you even do that? It's. I, it's science. You have to put it in proportion to something else. So it'd have to be like a really like a small dick, but an equally sized cat. So that it would imply that the dick is the size of a cat. Zach Bond's talking about the drunken uh, bunny brunch, uh, which CCSD is putting out, uh, doing on 420. Uh, I'm playing an acoustic show there. It'll be me, Lydia Lowe. I think there's a couple other people. Hmm. Super keen on it. When is that? I think they really had to just field like, well, we want Richard, but we got to... We got to grab some people who don't hate him. So, like, <laughs> so it's cool. It's like a lot of my, a lot of my friends. You have fucking, to book shows around that. It'd be like, all right, I got three oh, bands yeah. on the bill. All right, I just added the Weebies. All right, now I got one band on the bill. I think I, I remember one time, like the the show, the one that I got, the thirty five dent one, the one I, I didn't get to play because I got arrested trying to get on the fucking stage like beforehand. Um, I remember we weren't originally scheduled to play. Like Black Pussy was supposed to play, and yeah. like. I guess some people had gotten like really offended about that name, which I always thought the name was about a black cat, but whatever, you know. And they fucking, it, you know, it's, it's weird how Denton like picks and chooses its battles. It's like they got pissed off about black pussy, you know. But they're like, we have at the time we had a band rolling around here called the Bukaki Moms, and there's the mm -hmm. Gay Cum Daddies, you know. It's, yeah. it's like, well, fucking oh, okay, you know. Like, well, they they got into some controversy too at some point. Like I think like what was it? What what was that? Because if someone can comment, what was the big controversy with uh, Rick Eye and all those guys' bands or something like they were banned from Rubber Gloves or something? No, it was Problem while? Dog. Okay, actually, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that story. I, have I told you that story? That's all the same band, though. That yeah, I mean, much. kind of. Well, yeah. And then like, they changed the name to Trouble Cat. I want to say it was Matt Burgess <laughs> who would like hit me up about it. Maybe I can't remember if it was Rick Eye or like who it was, but like hit me up about getting a show for them. And you know, at this time, Abbey Underground was doing fucking. Uh, Thursday night, like jazz nights. And I just kind of lied to Abby Underground and told them that they were a jazz band. <laughs> it's like, you got to get this jazz band problem. Well, I mean, in play. some ways they are a jazz band. Yeah. I mean, that's, that was my thinking on it, but, <laughs> um, so the fucking, yeah, they, uh, this, uh, it was basically 30 or 40 fucking people that just hopped up on stage and pretty clear that they didn't, you know, they weren't interested in actually playing you know, what, what would traditionally be thought of as music, you know, and just a lot of banging on stuff and yelling and screaming. And it was funny. Cause I always it, describe it as a band, a whole entire band falling down the stairs at the same time. For sure. And like, <laughs> what was great was that like, uh, the sound guy, Drayden Bell, uh, he was like really taking his time to like mic up this band. Like he was, <laughs> like it was going to be something he didn't know, like what it was beforehand. So he's got, you know, mics everywhere and he's really, you know, honing in his craft and, Sure enough, they start and he fucking loses his mind and he comes at me and he's, you know, he's trying to shut the band down from playing, you know, like after like just a few minutes and comes to me, he's all yelling, he's hot, he's all yelling, he's like, do you know how unprofessional this is? I was like, what? And he was like, this, the booking this. And I was like, well, you're the fucking engineer and so it's unprofessional for you to even have a fucking say. Like, <laughs> your job, your job is to make them sound good and... <laughs> 
right now you're yelling at me. So, <laughs> oh, God, he was so pissed. When dude. I first started booking at Andy's, I would get yelled at a lot by the bartenders because I basically um, Blake Blake quit, and then I came in and. Justin is not really a booker at all. So he was like, Jared should book all the shows. And I was like, I don't know if I can book a whole calendar. I can book like two Saturdays a month or something and get quality. But no, they gave me the whole calendar for Andy's for about three or four months before I brought Spencer in to help me. Yeah, it's tough being a booker, man. And dude, there'd be some nights where it just didn't hit. I just had to get what I could get. And they'd be like, thanks a lot, Jared. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, I think... Part of it is because you're working on such volume, like, you know, the, I've always told bands like, dude, you know, you can't make it to where it's just like, hey, it's us playing here. And like, that's supposed to be fucking somehow exciting. You know, it's like, no, you have to make it like some no, sort of. Nobody like, understands that better than Make Blake. it like some sort of an event. You yeah. Know? Blake, Blake is, that, that dude gets it. Yeah. I, I love Blake. He's a. I'm, I love Blake too. I've always really wanted to like. <laughs> wrestle him so bad. I wrestle mean, him. I'm sure that'd be cool. He'd probably, I, it'd last, yeah, the, 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 all 30 seconds of it, you know, even if... Yeah, he, well, he'd probably, he'd probably rope-a-dope you, you know, just let you think you're winning. Yeah, and then, and then that, that's like, what it would be. Right, right when you think you're going to put a, a scissor hold on him or something. Get some Austin Connects. Get some Austin Connects. Who I says, mean, I do play... Who says I don't have Austin Connects? I am... I love at kick butt coffee on July. I love 12th. playing in Austin. Uh, Max over there from fucking uh, Beerland. You know, I always loved uh, playing down there. And um, I never played at Beerland. S- fucking that I know of. Spider House was pretty cool. A couple times that we played there. Um, you know, that's over kind of towards the campus and shit. I always Austin like, always. I always like Red Seven. I don't even know if that's still down there or not. Red Seven. Dude, yeah, CCST. You can totally call in. Yeah, do a, a conference call. We can talk about. That show coming up. Um, actually, I forgot to mention the fucking Rock Philosophers Beer Alley goddamn noise market, which is tomorrow. My, my punk rock band, the Wee Beasties, will be there. We'll be playing at 11 p.m. Uh, rain or shine, most likely rain. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think it, it should clear up later by the time we're playing. And um, Yeah, it's supposed to rain like well into around noon or one or something like that. Oh, that's it? Fuck. Well, we're playing at like 11 p.m. But it's going to rain all morning, like from 3 a.m. till that time. Dude, I could give a fuck about that shit. You know, like if if you know if I'm 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 trying to bide my time because I keep thinking that he's gonna fucking call in. Yeah, if you're gonna call in, Zach, uh, the oh, hotline two one four four eight eight ninety six zero five. Yeah, uh, but um, that that noise market show is gonna be cool. Uh, I think the night we're playing, him and the Cox are playing. Uh, dude, just a shitload of fucking bands. Uh, I know. Uh, that uh, the next night Sunday, um, you know, you'll have Puddin' Tan Star Party, a um, bunch of, and I think those are the headliners. Uh, got a bunch of other really cool bands that'll be fucking uh, playing too. So uh, that should be fun. And I know Dave Cromaldi has been fucking losing his mind. He's <laughs> he doesn't. It's kind of funny because like you know those people who like who's Dave Cromaldi by the way. He's got put it. He's uh, you know I met him as a photographer and like uh, he he kind of. You know, was taking pictures and shit, and then he just kind of asked me to if we could play a show, and thankfully I didn't forget because I have a really bad habit of like. So is he? He's a photographer. Or a booker yeah, or he's what? a photographer, but he's. I guess I don't know if this is his first show. I want to say he's from Thailand or some shit because he's having a fucking another show that's basically the same thing but with different bands in Bangkok like next month. Oh wow! Yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Of course, it's. <laughs> Pretty hard for a guy like me to get a One passport nowadays. One night in nowadays. Bangkok makes a hot man humble. Dude, Murray <laughs> Head. Yeah, that's who sings that. That, that shit uh, blew my mind. I didn't know that that was like written for like a fucking musical or something. That makes sense. Yeah. It kind of comes off as like a musical song and like it, it kind of sets a scene As a musical in song. You know, no, you know what I mean. Like as, as written for a musical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh um, my God. This is U.S. history. It's in the globe right there. <laughs> U.S. history. I got to an argument with somebody yesterday. We were talking about the Civil War, and uh, yeah, I can't remember who it was. I was so drunk, but I was trying to argue that there never was an American Civil War because a civil war is when two or more uh, opposing factions fight for control of one nation's government, which wasn't the case. 
in, hmm. in, in our what's called a civil war. We had uh, two different countries, one fighting for independence and the other fighting for the consolidation of the states, hmm. of power for the states. So, so it was kind of like sort of a civil war, basically? I mean, it was a civil war in the sense that like... Depends on what side you're looking at it from. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. true. My, when I was growing up, my grandmother never called it the civil war. She called it the war of northern aggression. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> raised in Texas. Oh my god, <laughs> good figure. Hey, bud, what's your um, problem? So I think, uh, God damn it, Zach, you gotta fucking call in for fuck's sake. And Corlin Blankenbaker is correct. I might be an Austin connect. I don't know. I feel like I've got like four thousand or so some chain. I don't know friends on like Facebook, and I think I think I knew like a solid thirty of them, and I think a lot of them are like from. Hey, my dad's fucking watching. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that's cool. I just saw Richard Haskins join, and I was like, that's confusing. I'm friends with a lot of Richard Haskinses on Facebook. Um, <laughs> my dad, of course. Uh, I'm also friends with Black Richard Haskins from Spokane, Washington. Yeah? He is my favorite Richard Haskins, like, by far. Uh, he's way better than Maryland firefighter Richard Haskins, and he's way cooler than investment banker from Southern California Richard Haskins. Uh, because those guys are like little, just, I, I often wonder like what that must be like, cause these guys try to like live totally normal lives. But if they Google their name, it's like pictures of me and fucking women's underwear on stage and fucking mug shots and shit. So I've always kind of wondered like, you know, what that aspect of, what that aspect of it might be like. I don't know, man. What do you, what, how do you feel when you look up your name and you find some square in a polo? I haven't done, uh, <laughs> no, no, I guess that makes fucking sense. <laughs> I, I Google my name like about once a month just to like make sure I'm still cool, and yeah. I'm I'm I never cease to be amazed. I got some funny Google images when you look me up. Oh, we're getting a call. We're getting we're a call. Ahead. Let's go. Uh, it's Zach. Oh, sweet. Hello, Zach. You're on. You don't know Dick with Richard Haskins. Okay. What's up, bro? Shocker tackle. Shocker tackle box with CCSD. What about a tackle box? Shocker tackle box. Like my club name. Oh hell yeah, yeah! I forget you guys have all these like nicknames and shit. I feel like mine, mine would be like Spider or like, or like, you know, like Doctor Cock and know, Balls. Know. Maybe like Camel Spider. Or yeah. Like Doctor Cock and Balls. Yeah, you guys brewing some uh, beers and shit. For you guys that don't know, CCSD. What does CCSD stand for? The Christian Choir of South Denton. Yeah. The Christian Choir of South, South Denton. Wow. Oh, that's funny. Um, so, yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on on the 20th, on 420. Uh, so, we, uh, we didn't throw it last year, but we threw it the year before. It's our Easter event, uh, the Drunken Bunny Brunch. Uh, it's going to have a lot of homebrewed beers, uh, some Irish coffee, a mimosa bar, a lot of breakfast foods. Uh, it's gonna be a, a hell of a time. Yeah, well, gotta you gotta get a whiff of this. <laughs> who, hey, who all? Uh, you guys know right offhand, like who, besides me, who all's playing out there? Uh, we have uh, Patrick Hamilton. Oh, he's great. And then we have Ethan Burchard. Yeah. And, uh, you, you go on, Richard. And then uh, who, who's our last? Um, Lydia Lowe, I think maybe. Mother Falcon is uh, finishing finishing it off. Their first acoustic set ever. Oh, cool. Where's the Where's the location at? Twenty six fifteen North Locust. Twenty six fifteen North Locust. Twenty six fifteen North uh, Locust, Denton, Texas. The Bunny Brunch. The Drunken Bunny Brunch. Dun Drunken Bunny Brunch. Hey, dudes! Th thank you guys for calling in. I uh, uh, hope you uh, hope you have a good night. Hey, uh, you motherfuckers, come out tomorrow. Watch we beasties play. We'll be over at. Yeah. Hell yeah! Hey Zach, I got a question for you, real quick. Are you still there? I guess. Yo, wait. Oh, yo, wait. yo, Zach, I got a question for you, real quick. This is Jared. Yeah. Hey, have you been crushing it this week? Me? Yeah, have I you been crushing it? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Me neither. Have you been crushing it this week? No, 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 I haven't. <laughs> well, you better get to crushing, motherfucker. See you later, Dick Weasel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that should be that should be a real fun show. Those guys are real cool. Hey, there's Matt Dalton right there. Just you know, fucking started watching. Uh, that's I th that's the guy who gave me this tattoo. The, the, nice. 
<laughs> yeah, those guys are really cool. Um, I went out, uh, I think they had a thing. It might have been, no, it was before New Year's. God, I've been drinking a lot the last few months. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, man, what year is it? Uh, they, we, we, we went out and watched, uh, I want to say they had something for like, what it, might, would it have been Christmas maybe? I don't know. They had something, but they were brewing all these. No, it was Oktoberfest. That's what it was. They had like a thing for Oktoberfest and uh, they, uh, no, I'm sorry. I fucking lied again. It was some goddamn Viking holiday. I just thought of this really random thought. <laughs> <laughs> Save it. <laughs> they had a Von Eric beer, though. I was pretty fucking happy about that. You're on You Don't Know Dick with Richard Haskins. What the fuck is up? Yeah, I, I want to know who Dick is because this is the big dick. Oh, shit. This is my dad. <laughs> That's my stepmom fucking laughing in the background. I could, I could fucking hear that from a mile away. What's up, dad? Hey. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, I think you know the fucking answer to that. <laughs> you ain't gonna be a fucking Yankee, are you? No, nah, hell no. Why would I? Why would you? No, no, not at all. No. I am. Oh, I just want to know. I'm a Texan. I, I would defend my homeland. I love I'm a, Texas. I'm a Texan. I'm proud to be here. I, I want you to uh, tell everybody that time you, uh, I, I came home one night, you were watching, uh, uh, Cinderella. Oh my God. Okay. Actually, that's a pretty good story. So I remember uh, my, my dad, you know, for, for those of you, you know, when I was growing up, my dad worked uh, uh, this real late shift and, you know, I always, I would stay up real late, you know, trying to, you know, a little kid, you know, my yeah. fucking GI Joe underwear, trying to, you know, wait and see, uh, see my dad when he got home. And of course we, you know, we had cable, you know, and so I'm watching Cinemax one day and it, it tells me that the, this next movie that's coming on is called The Erotic Adventures of Cinderella. <laughs> and I, didn't, I didn't know what erotic meant. I thought it meant like exotic. Like it's like, oh, it's like Cinderella in the jungle, you know, or some shit, you know, or something. Yeah, and I get it. Dad, my dad comes home and he's like, what are you doing, boy? And I was like, fucking uh, watching Cinderella. And he goes and makes some food, comes back and sits down and he comes in and God damn, Cinderella's naked. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting there confused and my weenie's getting hard and I can't figure out why. And I'm like, <laughs> What is this shit, you know? There's an eighth dwarf in this scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, I love you, Dad. Uh, 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 I hope I get to see you soon. And uh, um, uh, just, uh, I I'm glad you're watching. Th thanks for being supportive. Uh, I, I, I love to listen to you. Hell All yeah. Right, you guys have fun. Well, sure will. I love uh, you, Dad. Catch you later, numb nuts. Uh, my <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> he's called Richard's dad, numb nuts. <laughs> he's, he's, That's, he's, he's fun as fuck. I'm trying not to discriminate. I wanted to have, like, some kind of, he's you a know, real, um, he's, Super fun. Term of endearment that's insulting for everyone when I hang up. You know, like, yeah, talk to you later, dick face. Yeah. yeah. Which is weird because I'm technically a dick face. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm... You're a Richard face. Yeah. I mean, I th this this is technically a dick face. Yeah, so. it's a dick face with your Weasley eyes and your beardy McDenton. Well, you know, a lot of people... It's so funny. It's like, um, my dad's... Dad, so my my grandfather Tom, I, you know, I never met him. He, you know, died when my dad was seventeen. So, yeah. You know, but uh, he was one of the first triplets born in the state of Texas in like the twenties. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, of course, back then there were no, um, you know, there were no sonograms. You know, and uh, I think my great grandfather was, you know, out working out in the cotton field or something. So you know, they, the the anyways, they, they my great grandmother gives birth, and instead of having one kid, all of a sudden there's three of them come out. You know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they didn't have names for three kids, you know, so the doctor named them all, Tom, Dick, and Harry. No shit. <laughs> and uh, uh, no middle names. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no middle you names. Know, and you know, a, a Dick, 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 died, Dick died when he was six months, so Tom and Harry were raised as twins. So my dad's actually named after the brother who had died, and I'm named after him. So really, even though Dick is a nickname for Richard, I, I we're actually, actually named Richard after I actually after believe Dick. this story, but sometimes you'll go into a story, and it's just like, all right. I'm waiting for this one to no, this is to play out. Total shoot, like this is total shoot, like yeah, that's a that's a true fucking story. Uh, Selena Peterson asked if I'm wearing a thong again at this show, or was it like a one time thing? Man, it really depends on the weather. Uh, I ordinarily don't like wearing a lot of clothes on stage uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it gets fucking hot doing what I do. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fucking physical activity. Uh, to do something like that. And then uh, uh, also, the way I see it, I got to move like a fucking cheetah. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, I, I got to be able to, <clears throat> I 
like a cat. Like, so uh, I fucking don't. That uh, looks funny on I the don't, screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're a bunch of dumbasses. <laughs> yeah, so uh, actually, you know, I really, really, really hope the fucking weather holds up so that we can play outside so that I can be a bit more wild because if it's if we're inside we're going to be inside of a, a bearded monk um and you know i love those guys ben easley's such a great guy like i love everybody who works there you really know this cool. could be a really um, positive really cool experience for play. you guys yeah like really cool spot to play and then uh but you know at the same time it's not the kind of place that i really want to have a fucking mosh pit in so i might have to kind of tone it down but you know i'll keep the same energy Cunt alert, cunt alert, incoming cunt, incoming cunt, cunt alert, cunt alert, incoming cunt. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's talk about Greg Ginn. For those of you who don't know, uh, Greg Ginn, you know, in fact, if you don't know, you're a fucking asshole. But uh, Greg Ginn uh, is uh, basically one of the, you know, he's the founding member of the band Black Flag. Um, he's done a bunch of solo stuff uh, afterwards. Um, he produced, uh, well, th well, I guess he didn't really produce, but he made it possible that a lot of these really cool records and the uh, punk records, like in the 1980s, you ever hear the Jackass theme song? That's a fucking Minutemen song. You know, it's called Corona. A lot of people just think of it as the Jackass song. It's like, actually, I kind of hate that it's the Jackass theme song because it's such a pretty song. Um, you know, it's, yeah. um, and so, you know, he owns uh, a lot of that stuff and, uh, um, He's notorious throughout kind of like the punk rock world for being thought of, I would say, like as a cunt, right? But hmm. because, I mean, uh, you know, Henry Rollins like doesn't like him because he did, never paid a fucking member of any member of Black Flag, like a royalty from what this is, you know, I don't know this firsthand. I've met him several times. I've met him. This is all stuff you either heard or read, right? Yeah. As yeah. far as my actual dealings with him. I met him in 2011. Uh, we were doing uh, the WeBCs. We were doing a split seven inch with Brave Combo, um, and um, you know, anytime you're doing a you know split record, you know, with another band, especially a band that's way more well known than you, you kind of want to find uh, some sort of angle or some sort of way to really push your side. And uh, I'd heard that he'd moved to Taylor, Texas. Cause you know, they're from Hermosa beach, California, but yeah. I'd heard that he'd moved to Taylor, Texas outside of Austin and had a fucking cat ranch. No joke. You know, <laughs> a cat uh, ranch? Yeah, a cat what, what, what does that entail? I guess it's like a cat sanctuary area. I don't think he raises them for meat or anything. You know, I mean, he's a vegan from when I, <laughs> he's, he's, a, <laughs> he's a vegan from when I gather. Uh, but uh, he literally um, knows more than one way to skin a cat. And I, had stumbled upon his like email address one day and I just kind of emailed him, you know, and I sent him like um, some of the recordings that we had. Tim Kimsey was producing this for us and um, not to just sit here and name drop, but Tim Kimsey is a great, uh, I mean, he's engineered. He's got a Grammy for doing Kirk Franklin. Uh, he's a um, great engineer. He's done everything from uh, Pantera's Far Beyond Driven and Cowboys from Hell. Uh, this reminds me of something funny. Go ahead, though. To, to like a bunch of things, but he was producing it. And, you know, we just wrote Greg in a letter. And, you know, I was like, hey, you know, would you play on my band's record? And, you know, I come hang out and with some of these students here at the school, you know. And uh, um, and he was really fucking cool about it. He actually just uh, wrote me uh, back. I was like, yeah, I'll be there Saturday. And it was a kind of a trip because I'm like, I got this motherfucker's like band like their logo tattooed on the back of my neck and, you know, I've been listening to him since I was fucking 13 or so. And here they are playing, them, you know, here he is playing on my fucking record, you know? So that was, that was a trip. He was really, really nice about that. Didn't charge us any money. Uh, we just took him out to lunch. He, he's vegan. So I didn't know what to do. I just took him to eat Indian food. I, fucking, uh, hmm. I figured that seemed like a safe bet. Can you eat some rice? Yeah. Well, so, uh, <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. I've only eaten Indian food a few times. I've got place over off of uh, over by the university and everything. Yeah, he, yeah, I've been over there a few times. He, I don't like curry very much. You really? No, I don't it's a, it's acquired taste. It's kind of like a coffee, I suppose. Yeah, probably. Um, but he he was the one thing that I've always learned is to treat people how they treat you, not how you've heard that they've treated other people. Um, now you know there you know there's an exception to every fucking rule, you know. But if 
you know, if you believed every story you ever heard about me, I mean, a lot of them are true, but a fucking shitload of them are not. I mean, you'd think that I was a fucking biggest asshole like on the planet if you believe it. It just depends on when you bump into you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true, too. Because, um, like, like I said on that one show, it was like, there were times when like, I'll see you in public and you're like, oh, we're having this conversation. And then I'll see you another time and like, you'll be in the basement at Andy's bar. I'll be like, what's up, Richard? And you'll be like, I don't know you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, when I'm on like a tear or some uh, shit, it's just whatever hoves into my field of vision, it's like <laughs> fucking a little. It's like once you once you start the bunny, man, it just it just drums on down the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm gonna say Greg has never been a cunt to me, but if the stories about him are true, yeah, dude's totally a fucking cunt. I mean, because a lot of those a lot of those people from Black Flag, like some of them are struggling. You know, what I mean, it's not they're not all Henry Rollins's. They're yeah. not, you know, Kira Rosser, you know, ended up getting a fucking uh, Academy Award, I think, for some sound production thing. Oh, that. wow. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. She's actually, she's really cool. A lot, you know, it's, it's funny how like really accessible and really cool a lot of the older punk rocker people are, you know, like, but yeah, he was always nice to me. Um, smokes probably the dankest fucking pot I've ever fucking smoked in my entire life. I mean, yeah. I, I was... You know, I mean, I've sm- I've smoked some fucking pot in my life, but this fucking dude, like, I don't know what the fuck he, he like, where he got this shit, and but yeah, that's probably my favorite memory ever. Just watching him play on the fucking on our record, like, is this okay? You know, you're like, you're Greg Ginn. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I'm so happy that you. Oh man. Yeah. He's, so yeah. you brought up Pantera for yeah. a second, and it reminded me of this idea I had. You know, like sometimes you think of something that's just like comedy gold. Yeah. Pantera themed restaurants. <laughs> So like cemetery crepes. Oh like, wow! Yeah, and like uh, far beyond delicious. <laughs> far beyond delicious. Vulgar display of flour. Like uh, a bakery. Yeah, like a bakery. Vulgar display of flour. Wow. Yeah. And then what was the other one? Great Southern Char Grill. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Respect Walk, the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Tim was telling me. Tim had a bunch of really interesting stories about booging with the Pantera dudes and like uh Tim Kimsey the guy who did our record like uh he on his like I guess I don't know if it I think it went gold oh we're getting a call we're getting a call you're on you don't know dick with Richard Haskins what is up boys who's this Oh, pretty good, man. What are you up to tonight? Oh, just working, man. Hey, fucking uh, two weeks from now, I'm going to see Black Flag Live out here in Denver, Colorado. But Mike Vallely is uh, front manning for them. I was Bro, dude, Mike Vallely is fucking insane, dude. Uh, have you ever seen that video of him fighting five guys at once? No, but I'm going to look it up. Bro, we're going to, yeah, we're going to have to pull this up. Right now, is it another caller on the line? Yeah, you gotta wait till the other call stops to call in. Yeah, uh, whoever's calling right now, call back in just a second. <laughs> we're 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 real high tech here. We've got a little fucking phone that we're putting. We don't right got the here. little like hold things like at the radio station. Yeah, and what's great is we don't screen our fucking calls either, so that's great. You know, <laughs> nope, don't screen. You, you can, if we don't want to talk to you, we'll hang up. Like if you Dude, call yeah, and ask uh, questions, like are you gonna answer stuff we'll, about motorcycle clubs, and the answer is no. Nope. We'll, then we're like, see you later. We'll pull that video up here in a minute. <laughs> We'll pull that video up here in a minute, but uh, yeah, Mike Vallely, you know, this is before he, you know, joined like the new incarnation of Black Flag. There's a video of him, and I and I'm I swear to God, it's five fucking dudes. He's he's at some skateboard competition. Is as he's leaving, one some one of these like little fucking frat boys calls him a skater fag, and he just loses his shit, takes his shirt off, like punches a dude, elbows the next dude, like punches the other, like. It looks like some shit out of a fucking movie. Like he beats the ever living fuck out of all five of these fucking. He's a that's one dude I would never fuck with in the mosh pit, dude. And so I'm trying to see how crazy it's gonna get because this thing is going down at a hot dog festival, which I was really uh, upset about, but I have to be excited about. It. It's just absurd. I'll solve please tell me it's called Sausage festival. Fest. But, uh, no, yeah, they're playing with the Offspring, playing with a bunch of other. Oh yeah, yeah, bad, bad religion, Offspring. Team, but- Black and um, Pennywise, I think. I've never seen Pennywise, really? Goddamn. First time, but with Mike Vallely, he was a you know huge, and the huge dwarves, fucking inspiration. Too, I mean, we played with them a few months ago. You ever played with Black Flag uh, during the War Tour or anything like that, or if you ever met Mike? I've never met Mike Vallely. I've hung out with Greg Ginn quite a bit. Uh, we did like a mini tour together, 
and you know we've worked in the studio together. I've never hung out with Mike Vallely. I've talked with some of the other Black Flag dudes. Um, uh, they've always been very nice, uh, but uh, I don't know Mike Vallely. He seems like an intense dude. So I mean, if you're not going to have Henry Rollins with you, you know, it's I guess it makes sense to just grab a dude who can whoop some fucking ass. So. Hey Jacob, we're gonna we're gonna. Anytime, bro. See you next week, man. Checking out that video, man. Hell yeah, bro. Thanks, dude. Eat a dick. See you later. (laughs) Eat a dick. Uh, (laughs) Man, we should try to. Can we try to pull up that? um, Yeah, yeah, I can do. It should be on YouTube. Not that. Um, Um, What do you want the the fight? Yeah, yeah. I'm. uh, You guys have got to see this fucking shit. Like, what is it? If Um, yeah, Mike Vallely, M. uh, You know, Mike, and then V A L. It should be. Is that it? Yeah, that's his name. But like, see if you like fight. Yeah, skate fight. I'm sure that that's probably what it is. Well, I'm sure there's probably gonna be multiple videos because this dude's kind of a fucking fighter. Yeah. Oh, sorry. He fight. Here? Sorry, he fights four guys, not five guys. All right. Well, let's get it ready. Let's get it loaded up. Yeah. It's just um, like a security camera or what? I uh, I think yeah. I think that's basically what it is. It's just like a, a security camera. Um. <laughs> this video may be inappropriate. I understand and I wish to proceed. Yeah, bro, this is insane. Oh, this is old. Yeah, it's a really old video. I've seen I've seen this before. Let's but uh, if you guys go are, over to it, we'll uh, go ahead and chime in for a second here. Uh, show you guys this breaking news: Mike Vallely fights four guys <laughs> fucking fifteen years ago. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There he is, right there. One of them calls him a skater fag. Oh no, there's five of them there. I'm not, he might only fight like three or two or four of them. This guy's just laughing at him. Dude just takes his shirt off. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There you go. <laughs> That's not a dude I would want to fuck with in any kind of mosh pit. Like that, that, Mike Vallely is a fucking animal. Dude, <laughs> he's trying to fight him in a fucking, I'm sorry, Hawaiian shirts are hilarious. And they're like, dude, then he's like, Try to act all tough. Like, what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> you're bowing up to a dude who just kicked three of your friends' asses and knocked you the fuck down. Like, you know, it's like such a strange, like, I don't know. I, I kind of miss when punk rock was a little bit more fucking dirty and dangerous. You know, it's kind of getting back that way now, but, it, you know, it'll never be like it was. You yeah. Know? And, uh, you know, I mean, we, and we didn't even get to experience it, like, you know, at the fucking. I mean, it, it will. You know, what's, you know what's a funny story that a lot of people don't know about? But it happened, and it was fucking hilarious. Yeah. All right, so we were playing at Dan Silverleaf, and the fat, it was the Faps playing at Dan Silverleaf at this big benefit show. Um, and uh, a bunch of people there. It kind of thinned out by the time we played. Cause we, get, we kept getting pushed back, right? We were supposed to play like at 10 or 11, and they got pushed back to midnight. And then I think it was like 1 in the morning by the time we were playing. And then... Um, um, What's what's Craig from Craig Welch is running yeah. door, and then that dude with the big beard that used to work over at Rubber Gloves was running sound. Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, fucking uh, what's what band is he in? God, uh, and, Slobberbone. Slobberbone, yeah. So he's running sound. Me and Jed and Matt and, and Kevin or Kevin Seller were all playing this show, right? And this guy that was there all day was just drunk, and he kept getting on stage during comedy sets and. All kinds of like Dalton. I think Dalton Pruitt was on stage, and the guy kept trying to get on stage. And Dalton's like, he's like, "Hey, bro, this ain't open mic. Get the fuck off my stage," yeah. you know. And then like, um, we're playing. He gets up on stage and starts yelling into the mic during our song. And it's one thing if you get up and yell, and maybe you don't know the lyrics, but you're in rhythm with the music. Not not even that. Just complete bullshit. Oh, that's so sucks. Jed was like, "Don't get the fuck back on our stage," you know couple songs in he gets back on the stage and starts yelling in the mic grabs matt's mic away from him starts screaming in it knocks stuff over almost bumps and knocks kevin over and then uh jed's like i told you to stay the fuck off the stage and then uh you know i'm gonna whoop your ass you know and the guy's like looking at him like that and then jed's like come here 
like that. And the guy starts walking over to Jed and he sets down his guitar, tackles the guy off the stage at dance. He just starts beating the shit out of him. And then like other people in the crowd go over to the guy and start hitting him too. And they're like, fuck that guy. And then like the sound guy turns off all the sound and they kick us out. And they're like, this is not a bar that condones violence. You guys are never going to play here again. And like, we were like, we're really sorry that, you know, like that guy should have been bounced. You know, he came on stage multiple times all throughout the night. And uh, and what's funny is the Faps have only gotten into altercations like that twice in like seven or eight years. God damn. Uh, I think the biggest fights that we ever got into were usually like in Dallas. You know, they used to have a real bad skinhead problem. And then for a while they had those ARA guys, you know, the anti-racist action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that shit? Yeah. God damn, dude. We go fucking play down and we go boogie down to, you know, Profit Bar, like Lakewood or someplace where you wouldn't expect those guys to be fucking kicking it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then it, they would just be like fucking like a riot. And I remember, I think probably we played on the square one time and uh, this fucking, I don't know if he was homeless or crazy or both or like what his deal was, but this dude like, you know, I'm almost never on fucking stage. You know, I'm always like just in front of it, you know? Uh, in the crowd, and yeah. this motherfucker like tackled the fucking piss. I mean, knocked the fucking wind out of me, you know. And I'm, I'm face like in the dirt, you know. And I'm like fucking still. I we're in the middle of a fucking show. I'm, I can't stop singing, so I'm fucking you know screaming in the microphone and shit still. And I'm thinking, God damn, somebody's gonna get this motherfucker off of me. He had my, I swear to God, the the palm like the 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 heel of my foot like was in the middle of my back. Like he had pinned my fucking like. It was some wrestling hold or some shit. And then I just, you know, still singing. And then I just remember getting turned over, you know, and I could see light now, you know. And it was Robert Hocamp, Chris Hocamp, and somebody else, Cole McLaren, I think, maybe Matt Pohl. They were all kicking the fucking shit out of this fucking guy, you know. (laughs) They had stopped playing their instruments, hopped off stage, beat the fuck out of this guy, and then hopped back on fucking stage. The award-winning Faps. Did you guys, are you guys award-winning? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have my awards. <laughs> I have my awards. I do I have awards. <laughs> Lindsay, is, spe- is she speaking the truth? She uh, was there. We, uh, well, I, so, so um, um, what is it? Um, I'm having a brain fart right now. Um, Maxima Distortion with a Z at the end. So it's uh, this one guy, Mario Ailman. He books a lot of metal shows and stuff. And they do an award show every year around December in which they have bands playing. And it's like, I think, I think it's in December. When is that show? I don't remember now. July? I don't, but anyway, they had it at like here in Louisville a few, a few years in a row. And like people from I Am Man, I Am Monster have won awards at it. And I think Tristan Thorndike's won awards at it. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, like so I won Best Punk Drummer in Texas two out of the three years. <sighs> Oh, badass. Yeah. Uh, I think our claim to fame is we won runner-up for Best of Denton behind Brave Combo in 2011 for Best Band in Denton. Oh, nice. And then uh, that was mostly because we'd created some uh, – I let a buddy of ours create some sort of bot to just sit there and vote like over and over and over repeatedly for us. And he still didn't win. Yeah, still didn't win. Yeah, and then he even, uh, he even called up Putin on the phone, and Putin couldn't get it done for him. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then we uh, then we got inducted to the uh, North Texas Music Hall of Fame, which is hilarious because like we actually created that, so and we just made a fucking award for it. But we had some really hilarious T-shirts whenever we won like Best of Denton. It was like. We basically is like best of Denton and then like runners up, like like small like fucking print like runners up. Yeah, it's pretty. Good. They give you a they give you a business card that says runner up on it. That'd be great. Like, <laughs> God, my fucking I'm dude, oh God, look, look how fucking old I'm getting, you fuckers. Jesus Christ, I still got a nice head of hair, dude. I have <sighs> too much testosterone. I'm getting fucking hair in places like that. I don't that no one should have it. And then I'm fucking losing it in places where like, I actually want it. I think that's part of the reason why I pulled off the beard. So you know just... when you get you get older um, and gravity takes hold, your dick gets a little bit bigger, right? And God, I think mine's doing the opposite. And what it is is like you have pubic hair and then it starts to grow up the tree trunk. If you simply trim your pubes, you'll add like a solid inch to your dick. Now, just, just imagine this, right? So 
I had hair grow all the way up the shaft, right? So I went ahead and shaved it like one of them Labrador poodles, right? So now I got the <laughs> shaft, and then like you got this nice head of hair there, right? So you got kind of like a dick fro. It's pretty nice. Sometimes what I do is I'll shave half my pubes, and I'll just turn side to side of the mirror playing good penis, bad penis. Good penis, bad penis. I'm like, well, this penis is a terrorist. Well, this penis is a God-fearing American. You yeah, know? I play the same damn yeah. game in the bathtub. <laughs> Dude, it's Kaylin Pearson. We went to fucking high school together, bro. Yeah. She was like such an overachiever, and I, I was always very, very proud of her, and she was a very, very cool person. I haven't seen her name or thought about her. We had geometry class together, still couldn't get a good angle on her. I, th- I want to say we are in student <laughs> council together, but she had some important job. I was just sort of there just as like a novelty yeah. piece. Like, oh, it would be hilarious to have him on student council. You know, yeah. It was, it was pretty much like a... We'll get extra snacks and all the machines. Dude, oh. what, we didn't do this in high school, but when I was in fucking middle school, uh, like, e- and I mean every fucking day, we would... Right before we went on the bus, me and my cousin, we'd go, Brad Williams, who I, I hope he watches sometime. <laughs> hey, Kaylin. Um, I, he, we would go to like the fucking vending machine and get like donuts and like honey buns and all kinds of shit, right? And then get on the bus and like sit in the back, right? And then when we were driving down the road, we would throw them at oncoming vehicles. Mm-hmm. Right, and so eventually, sometimes we'd run out of shit to throw. You know, you run out of donuts and shit. So I remember one time we threw a fucking quarter at this motorcyclist, and we were fucking three eighty. Uh, holy shit! Oh god! And we're getting a call. You're on. You don't know, Dick. Who's calling? Huh? Ricardo, Richard. Yeah. Hey, what's up, bro? Who is this? Casa. What's up? Dude, we're oh. still gonna fucking rock out, dude. It's gonna be wee beasties all the fucking way. Yes, it will rain, um, but. No problem, no problem. Vote, vote for Jerry Gideon for president of Mexico. Vote for Jerry Gideon. Vote for Mejor Mariana. Uh, uh. Me, me primo y yo toca más vergas una vez. Um, <laughs> estoy, yo, yo soy Sancho de la noche. Es, estoy jugando. Um, man, I no, yeah, co- yeah, dude, just come on out, bro. Yeah, just come on out. Like, we'll, you know, it's free, and like, we'll just kind of like, we'll just rock out and do your, do the shit. Yeah, dude. I mean, anything. Uh, you know, if you have any requests or anything you want, uh, I, I got a t-shirt for you too when you come out, brother. We got these uh, fuck Richard Haskins t-shirts. All right, uh, All right brother. Yes, absolutely. Yes, not acoustic. Yeah, it's a bit. I want to see it, man. Podcast. Dude, you destroy all the shit, man. Thanks, bro, dude. I can't even fucking wait. You're fucked up. You're crazy, man. Dude, you better come out. Muchas panoches. Gracias, Baba. Cuidado, my. Dulce, dale. Hey. Hey, thanks. <laughs> see you, brother. Thanks for calling, Hoto. <laughs> Hoto. Hoto. That's fucking. That's great. <laughs> the, the only thing I. The, it's kind of fucked up, like, the way that, like, you know, I don't know if that's, like, an American thing, because it's, like, the first thing people want to learn, like, whenever they, like, learn Passwords. Spanish. like, how do what's, I say bitch? How do I say, like, the motherfucker? First, you know, what's like, the first thing you want to say when so you learn So that's, like, English. the first thing that, like, people will learn, and then... You're all like, you're like, hey, Linda. I know enough Spanish bitch. to, like, order food, like, it's, you know, straight Spanish. Like, um, I can get cigarettes, I can get drugs, I can get alcohol. Um, I can, uh, sometimes a lot of it's in like work environments, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like not very conversationally sound. I, I, I did study a lot, like while I was in jail and prison. Cause I was like, well, fucking here may as well, you know, mm-hmm. may as well learn, you know, but, uh, I like all these craft beers, like in the background. Cause a lot of them, the only beer that I ever really drink is just cold, you know, not really. If, yeah, if I went to fucking, if I went to Harvest House, and we're I also in front of a live audience too. Yeah, we're perfect. We're we're at Carnegie Hall, everybody. <laughs> we're in the faraway land of Delaware. Delaware. <laughs> yeah, Chris, some of these names, like I never fucking. Oh, Cortland, you failed Spanish twice. Uh, well, if you need, you know, any help with anatomy, 
you know, uh, <laughs> that's that was a. All right, so um, I'm gonna pull up a video that's uh, dum dum of the week. Dum dum of the week. And oh yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get a little political here, and uh, anybody who wants to get we're pissed not, off can get fucking pissed off. But it's we're funny. Not, we're not gonna go. We're not gonna. Uh, not too political, but this is. More- this is funny because what it is, it's somebody not doing their homework. <laughs> yeah. So this is a congressional hearing. Uh, yeah, this is a congressional hearing. Here we go. This happened, what, just yesterday or two days ago, right? Uh, really recently, like yeah. in the next, the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, let's make this a little bigger, actually. Let's do that. There we go. Thank you. Today, there are more than 44 million Americans that owe, <clears throat> this is student loan crisis, trillion in student loan debt. Last month, this committee received testimony that last year, 1 million student loan borrowers (coughs) defaulted, which is on top of the 1 million borrowers who defaulted the year before. What are you guys doing to help us with the student loan debt? I don't want your spin on it, dude. Who would like to answer first? Just keep going. Mr. Monaghan, Big Bang. Uh, we stopped making student loans in 2007 or so. Oh, so you don't do it anymore, Mr. Corbett? We exited student lending in 2009. Mr. Diamond? When the government took over student lending in 2010 or so, we stopped doing all student lending. Uh, thank you. What about small business? Uh, you mentioned that you were making loans to small businesses. Small business operators can't walk into your bank and get accounts. You kind of shove that off to community development organizations. Who can say that you have made an important business line lending to small businesses? Chair Waters, uh, we, as I said earlier, we made $8 billion in loans to of under a million dollar size last year, and we have operating accounts for about tw- 9 million small businesses. Thank you. My time is up. <laughs> Jesus fucking what Christ. A, that was painful, dude. It is painful. It's hard to watch because it's like it's it's kind of like she wanted to uh, to get a gotcha moment with the with the bankers. And she just really didn't. Co- I mean, because you could come up with a hundred things Plus to just get a gotcha the, the, moment. Listen, with a banker. That's the fucking thought process, too, behind what she's doing. The thought process is like. I mean, imagine me walking up to somebody who had a lot of money, and be like, "You're not lending enough to people." That's the. Other, I mean, that's the other. Fuck, and you're like, "Yeah." Is it? You know, like, how the fuck is that? You're saying, you yeah, know what you're I mean? gonna like, force us to lend more money. Yeah, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why aren't you making poor? Why aren't you making the business decisions that I want to make? Even though I assume no risk and you assume all of it. Like, <laughs> that's a good point. Wait a minute. I didn't think like, about, it. I didn't think about you know, that. I was more thinking about the fact the that, fact she, that she had no idea like, what she was reason. doing in her fucking yeah. homework. Yeah, and, she, and she's like... The like making it seem like they've caused a crisis because of student lending, and they're like, we stopped fucking lending to students 10 goddamn years ago. I'm not so. saying it wouldn't be a crisis if they were responsible, but yeah. uh, their hands are clean on that one. That's been 10 years ago. <laughs> Dude, you know, and I'll just say this right now, like, I don't know why she got so internet famous, but like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, like some of watching some of those things is pretty painful, and it's weird too because it's like, you know, Ben Shapiro has tried to like. Well, that's the funny thing is that like sometimes she says really dumb stuff, and sometimes it's like certain people like Ben Shapiro's really bad about it. They just they find every little thing to go after him, and then they'll talk shit about the the left media uh, for going after Trump all the time, and it's like. You literally pick every little opportunity to go after that chick. And really, she just kind of does it to herself every once in a while. And you don't have to try that hard. I, I kind of did this like – I remember you know, when I had gotten out of prison you know, and uh, I'd fucking been you know, kind of getting used to – you don't get a lot of politics in there. You know, let's be honest. You know, so uh, when people say they, they're going to watch the news, they, I'm, literally they're turning on TMZ. That, that's what you watch for the news. So, yeah. so you're like, well, what's going on with Kim Kardashian today? You know, and that's what they're like. <laughs> what but, did they break that was like big news a few months ago? Uh, they broke something. They just broke something like, about her yesterday about her wanting to be a lawyer or something. Not that. No, there was something that was like like big. Oh, wasn't it the Avenatti thing whenever he like beat up his girlfriend or something? Didn't they break that before everyone else did? Dude, I don't fucking. So TMZ is like intense like those guys i'm 12 what is this bro 
<laughs> Walk away. <laughs> Dude, here's the thing, man. Like, yeah, probably not the, you know. <laughs> if you're actually 12, you should change the channel. Yeah. <laughs> if you see a 12-year-old, you should just hand him like 10 bucks because – yeah. Those kids are just walking around with fucking boners, and they can't do anything with them. You know, they're just like, like, yeah. like a little goddamn powder. I would come home. Yeah, just give them a twenty spot, send them out to the red light district. They'll figure it out. I'd come home like fucking every day from school when I was twelve and just fuck the whole house, like fuck <laughs> like the couch, couch like fuck the sleeve of a jacket, like yeah. just totally just fuck the whole house. Like, you're like that isn't good. No, and because you, you're like kids, like have it. It used to be like a... <laughs> what the fuck? This, <laughs> this kid's a fucking troll. Dick Nickel? Your name's fucking Dick Nickel? Bro. <laughs> Five Cent Dick. <laughs> Five Cent Dick. <laughs> that's a damn good... That's a fucking that's a good nickname. <laughs> Five Cent Dick. <laughs> yeah, the fucking... Uh, this... Uh, I don't know. It's like... It, the, I feel like this whole landscape like that we're in now where it's just like we live in this like... The shit that you hear people like complain about, like, is like we've had fucking troops in Iraq and Afghanistan since I was in fucking high school. Like eighteen years now. That's insane to think about. Or, yeah, close like to 18 that's years, 17 insane years. to think about. Yeah, you know, like that, that's. Fucking 2011, we'd been there for as long as Vietnam. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. you don't even see it on the fucking news. And there's not even a fucking anti-war party anymore to vote for. You know, it used to be like, well, which is weird to me because historically Republicans were the fucking anti-war party. Republicans were elected uh, after World War II to make sure he didn't get into World War III. Republicans were elected after the, to end the Korean War. Republicans were elected to end the Vietnam War. And now they're this fucking pro-war party, right? And then even the goddamn Democrats are fucking the uh, pro-war party now. Yeah, too. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, like, no, we just don't believe no, in that war. We want to send, uh, do, 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 send troops out, You know, let's fight Syria. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> wait a minute. Like, you're both fucking... And so both parties it's fuck us. They fuck us on the really big sh shit. And that's why, like, they just keep us arguing over, like, the small shit that doesn't matter. You'll have, you know, and we, we know, you'll have two grown men screaming at each other about abortion, about which one's right about abortion. Neither of whom is going to actually fucking have an abortion, right? And then at the same time, you're like, that has almost nothing to do with like the really fucked up shit that's going to, you know, and we're, you know, we're, we got fucking a, a, a military presence and I'm not kidding. And, Almost 150 countries. It's these poli these politicians, There's 208 fucking sovereign nations on the globe, and we've got a military presence in 140 fucking countries. This two-party system, it's, it's fucking with you because you have Republicans that don't look out for you. You got all these Democrats that don't look out for you, and, like, they lie, lie, lie. Here's an example. Ask yourself this question. Why is Chuck Schumer pro-choice in the United States? His platform is pro-choice, but in Israel, in which he's a dual citizen, he's pro-life. It's just a fucking game. And here's the thing, too. I'm so goddamn embarrassed of America so many times because you know it gets to the point where it's like, when you see, you're like, damn, we're like we're bombing parts of the world, manipulating governments, doing all this shit, and then at home, it's like my trans club at high school doesn't get its own prom, and then that's <laughs> what's on the fucking news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, that has. I'm sorry. You get wait. You get your own club. That's badass. But. It's like, you're fucking, what does that have to do with fucking anything? Like, yeah. you know, it, it's, what's, what's it the blows bigger, my goddamn mind, dude. That's like, that's local, that's local politics, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when, you know, when you hear people like, they're like, well, I'd pay higher taxes because, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe in healthcare. And you're like, well, what do you think your taxes are going towards right now? You know? So those fucking uh, kids, you know, those kids in the fucking cages, you know, that there's, they're, you know, down in, you know, on the border and shit. What do you think's paying for that? You are, cocksucker. Mm -hmm. Stop fucking paying taxes if you want to get rid of that fucking shit. <laughs> if you think your taxes are going, you know, it, it's so weird how you can, people can hate a government and know that our government's doing fucked up shit. And then at the fucking same time be like, well, if we could just give it more power, things would be better. How the fuck does that make fucking sense? <laughs> it, it makes zero fucking sense. 
I don't know. That's just my fucking. I always think of that um, uh, that song by War. Why can't we be friends? Yeah, there's that line in it. And it goes, "Think I'd like to be the president." Yeah. So I can find out how money is spent. Dude, yeah, and then you, yeah, I see people all the time complaining about like they'll be like, "Trump did this with my taxes," you know, and you're like, <laughs> "All right, so let's let's go ahead and review the how our government works. Let's go ahead and look at <laughs> Article One, Section Eight. Who has a say over where tax dollars are spent? That would be the fucking U.S. Congress, right? Congress, yeah, Congress, right? So the president, you know, if we went back to an actual constitutional government, because think about this, like. Any government agency, any piece of bureaucracy, any of that fucking shit. So the CIA, the fucking uh, FDA, the fucking uh, uh, dude FEMA, uh, the IRS, uh, any government agency that is not the Supreme Court and it's not the House or Senate, that's a part of the fucking executive branch. And that it's that's crazy to think that like one guy like controls this whole giant area of just shit that our government is like constantly doing. And you're like, man, you know, I've been reading this fucking document here and it says you've only got like a few things you can do. You can veto or sign a law. Uh, you're, you can appoint some offices. Uh, you can pardon people. Uh, you can, uh, once war has been declared by Congress, then you're the commander in chief. We haven't declared war since fucking 19 fucking 41. I mean, that's insane to think about, too. Wow. You know, uh, Korea was not a declared war. Vietnam was not a declared war. Ron Paul asked that the fucking war on terror, you know, and I use that term loosely because, you know, it's like David Cross said, like, it's like having a war on jealousy. I like, like, I like the, 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 the Delaware fucking... Opera said, uh, the war on terror, or as I call it, twat. <laughs> yeah. you. Oh, God, I love Cortland Blankenbaker so much. And you'll have everyone on the trend. Um, yeah, we're not cool enough to set trends. Yeah. The only... <laughs> Yo. Have I ever set like, a trend before? I had like a buddy of mine whenever I was in like in, uh, like sixth grade, just to ride the bus with me. His older brother claimed that he started the trend of wearing a white shirt with a plaid shirt open. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, look. I was like, man, I fucking. It was like the boldest claim I'd ever heard. You know, like I'd ever heard anybody. I mean, he was dead ass serious though. Was, well, I'm the one that started hats backwards back in the '80s. <coughs> I mean, there's probably some people that did it, but I made it cool. I get freaked out if my hat is too straight. <laughs> like if I like put if I put oh, I, I don't even, I don't even think I can wear it. On. Like like how do you if if, if it if I wear a it right, just do, seems do this, weird to me. Do this, like, do this body language. Go, um, put your head, put your chin down below your Adam's apple. Sit up straight though. All right, now, now bring your shoulders in. I look like an asshole. Hi, Maya. Yeah. <laughs> you do that bike right there. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I've seen people do that shit before, and uh, not ever been anybody that I've liked. You don't like me? It's not that I don't like you. It's just that I prefer, <laughs> you know, not hanging out with people who do that. You know? That's not it's not a very uh, pleasing uh, body language to have. <laughs> like you walk, you walk in the room and somebody's doing that. You're like, oh, this conversation's going to go great. <laughs> yeah, no shit. All right. Uh, I, we're like at the, we're past the hour mark now. I think we should probably wrap it up. I got to piss. I need to smoke a fucking cigarette. Guys, it's Friday. Uh, we've had a, a great, you know, it's been a long fucking week. I think probably for the both of us. But you know what? It's like Henry Rollins said, like, America is not a place that you live. It's a video game that you survive. And I'm happy that we at least fucking survived it this week. And I'm happy that you motherfuckers watching have survived it too. Uh, it's uh, We're just going to keep going. And I, I hope uh, to see you guys next week. We're, we're, we're trying to kind of delve into like, uh, um, you know, more stuff, I'd say, like each week. So yeah, I'm trying to do some research on some things, and uh, we're gonna start doing YouTube uh, instead of Facebook Live here pretty soon. So, and I'll probably go ahead and comment on the video about it too. But uh, I have a, a YouTube channel. I can't change the name of it yet. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Facebook page so that everyone that's interested in the show they can go and like the page and be a part of it, and they can have all the information. Like if you want to donate to us to grow the show. We're gonna have ways you could do that. If you could give us a dollar, five dollars, whatever you whatever you want to do. Don't give us any money you can't afford to give us though. 
Um, also, please come out tomorrow. Watch the Wee Beasties. I got the fucking the, the, the fuck Richard Haskins t-shirts going. But we, we're going to have to try to build our YouTube channel, and we're definitely going to need your help to do that. In order, yeah. to have our, in order to have our own YouTube slash We're not doing channel, this show for us. We're doing it for you. We have to have a certain amount of subscribers You're welcome. on there. So we'll need you to help us get that subscriber base up. That way we can monetize it and have all that stuff. And, and you can uh, – because because uh, I had a conversation with Richard about this, and we'll end it here pretty quick. Um, Richard's not meant for normal jobs and stuff. No. He's not a normal guy. He's never going to be able to to just like, oh, I'm just going to – Imagine this, imagine coming up and, and I'm working at man. Arby's. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Not going to happen. He's going to be telling them the I'm fuck I'm going to eat all off. the fucking roast beef and they're going to fucking so, get to a fight with the manager. So Richard exists so that you can – this show is going to be – exist so that you can get your frustrations out through his conduit. You know what I mean? Just like with the shows. Just like with the Wee Beastie shows. You go to the show, you get your aggression out through him. He does the things you can't do because your boss will go, I don't know you. Yeah. Man, that's actually a really interesting way to put that. I, I really appreciate that. That's kind of how I've always kind of thought about it too. So, Very nice. Well, I, I love you guys so much. Uh, we're going to leave you with uh, some music or something, right? Yeah, we're going to close out with a little bit of... Um, oh, God, that's so cute. We're, we're going to... We're going to look at some uh, cute animals for a second, and then uh, we're going to end the show. All right. So this is for this one's for Tiffany Johnson. It's an otter. <laughs> I don't get that. She loves she loves little otters and stuff. She's, Tiffany Johnson? Oh, she's not on here. But, uh, oh. It's just she doesn't like me too much. I don't know. Who the fuck <laughs> doesn't? I don't know. <laughs> like, who doesn't? All right. Well, I love you guys. I uh, uh, hope to see you again next week. Uh, you've been fucking shit up. And you don't know dick. Just to say I did. Hey, yo, who got the who got uh. the drugs? Hey, yo, uh. who got the who got yeah. the drugs? Yeah. 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 Who got yeah. the who got yeah. the drugs? Yeah. Yo, hey, yo, 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 y